very much for this opportunity and welcome to the Chronicle. Thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Paul. We'll start with your, your childhood. Okay. Your life as a child, right, in the, in the Gambia. You were married off at the age of 14 and you went on to have your first child at the age of 15. Let's talk about your marriage. Um, you were telling me before we came to this interview that you mm -hmm. came from school and you were told that you were going to get married. Um, can you tell me about this, your, your, your marriage? How did it happen? I would like to say thank you, first of all, and for the opportunity that uh, even at very short notice you let me in. I'm very glad for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was like one very fine day. I came from school, and then by then my school was in uh, Botrop. I think you know, in Brikama, kindred of Botrop. And then when I came home, I saw that uh, the atmosphere was a little bit different. And then everyone was looking into my eyes, and they were smiling. And then I asked them, what happened? And then one of my auntie told me that, well, we just received a call on here that you are married. And then, of course, you could imagine the questions in my head was, why, to who, but I'm still going to school, I'm a child. But then, in my society, we are taught not to speak up. You just obey the rule and move on. Before they made that announcement to you, did you have any hint? Did you suspect anything or did anything happen at all to give you a clue that um, you might be married off? Actually not. There was no rumor and there was no way that I could even suspect that they were planning something like that. No. I was never informed. It was kind of like surprise, shock to me. Did they tell you who sent the call or not who you were going to marry to? Uh, yes. It was also one of the things. I was also married to my uncle in the same family. So. In my family, the people who know me, is, I'm from very famous and a religious family. And then this is something they have been doing for ages. Marrying women of? In the same, in the same family. family. Because they think that by doing that, the family will stay strong. And then their wealth will be in the family. This is how I kind of interpret. Mm what why they do they do something like that do you remember how old this man was your uncle was i think he might be between 30s plus i could say um because i have never seen him mm. and then suddenly and so you were you as, as, as you know assumingly you yeah, were I, half his age yeah uh, yeah of course mm -hmm. yeah. so before that announcement they never told you never set eyes on this mm. man yeah. And after that, my son is 15 years now, and he has never seen his father. Where was, where was the uncle, where was the husband, his man? Um, that man, he was, he, he was abroad. He was abroad. He was abroad. He came for vacation, and then I was told that uh, he was supposed to be my husband. How did you feel? I feel sad. I felt that uh, they wanted to destroy my dreams and then I felt that I was not powerful by then to say it no and then my mother also because as you know in our society women like girls we obey and then the if for example I was against it I said no and then my mother also said no she might also be divorced mm. that was what they used the weapon that they use that if you said no then we will divorce your mother. And so you didn't you didn't you didn't say no. I did not say no. But you didn't want it of course. Of course. I did not say no but I, it was not my intention. I did not plan to marry at that age because I wanted to go to school. That mm. was my mm. intention. And like you said your mother couldn't do anything about it. Couldn't say no because then her own marriage would be at that at, at at risk. risk. Um, but what was her opinion? What was her feeling? How did she, how did she react? What did she tell you? Uh, I could say my mother was even sad than me because she was hoping that I will go to school and then I will decide to choose a man that I want because my mother was never lucky also to choose 
a man for her. It was chosen for her. It was also chosen for her. And then the same family. The same family. My whole family were all fatties. And then so when the same thing happened to me, I could see how my mother felt. It's like a betrayal or a slap on her face. And what happened after you know you were told from school that um, you would marry this man? I cried, but then of course I wiped my tears. I said to myself that crying will never solve this problem, and that I have to be strong. I have to be strong for myself. That's when I said, okay, I just take in a good fit, but then I was still going to school. Mm. Yeah. And then the first time you 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 met, do you remember? Do you have a vivid recollection of the first time you set eyes on the man who was going to marry you? Yes, I I, I saw him, and then of course, I always say that if you are forced to do something, you know there is there is not you don't have this connection, and then um, the chemistry is different also. So. I was like, because they forced me to do this. Everything, what has happened, was not from my own will. Mm. That's how I just took it. Mm. And so, you were still going to school. Yes. You married mm. and you got pregnant yeah. to, um, what, 19? Uh, 2004. 2004. 2013, I was married, so 2004, I gave birth. Mm -hmm. mm. And then you were... What, 15? Yeah, I was 15. When you I were 15 when you, when you gave birth. And before you gave birth, you, you, went, you were nine months pregnant yeah. when you were about to sit um, to your grade nine um, YAC exam. YAC exam. Yeah. So you went to school, you went to sit at exams um, heavily pregnant. Yes, I, I could fully remember that uh, when I was going to school at the beginning, I was very lucky that uh, my schoolmates, my teachers, they were all very positive, and then they are all very. Um, they promote girls' education, and they were never against that I was even pregnant coming to school. Like sometimes you see in the society that they will say, "Oh, you are you are pregnant. You should not come to school." I was never. I never faced such situation, and then my classmates. I make jokes always that. that I said, because it's something, I have to be happy. Mm. You know, I have this idea that if I, even if I'm sad, I'm just affecting myself and my child. And then I just have to be happy and then take the things as they are. But then I know in the uh, back of my mind is for me, by then was education is, also, is the only important thing. Mm. It was a weapon. Yeah, that I, I had a great weapon by mm. then. Mm. So I start telling them I was pregnant. And then they said, no, you could not be. I said, yeah, I'm married. Yeah. And then so, you know, pregnant woman, of, of course, they will see as months go by. Mm -hmm. And then they said, oh, really, you are pregnant. And then they were very helpful, supportive, my environment surrounding my classmates. They are really nice. Yeah. So I sat my work exam. I went home. So I was excited because I was waiting for two results. Yeah. Yeah, the, my, the pregnancy and then the exams. Huh? Yes. Yeah. and then so if it will be a boy or girl, you know, by then yeah. um, scan to check uh, your your child was not if it was available, but I could not mm. afford maybe to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I was excited. Mm. And no one stopped you from going to school no. after you you were pregnant. No one. That was sometimes I I always say, how do I do it? I ask myself even how do I do it because. Sometimes in our society, there are always people who will say no yeah. to energy. And then there are always people who will say something that will make you, you to even say no. I was never stopped. No yeah. one told me why I was going to school. No one questioned me that, oh, you are pregnant, you go to school. I could not remember any comment yeah. from my family. Okay. Let's talk about your matrimonial home, mm -hmm. um, being a, 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 a child bride, mm -hmm. a, a child wife, um, you know, in a home. What was that like for you, the household cause, the responsibilities and duties of a wife? Actually, mine was also a little bit different because, I, like I said, uh, he was not living here. He came for vacation for only three months, so we stayed together. And then my family, uh, in my house, it was a big house, so we only have to cook, for example, dinner, only to cook rice. 
and I was going to school, so I had less less uh, things to do. Yeah. And actually, I did not play any role as a typical housewife mm. because I was a child. And then, by uh, as a child, I was going to school, mm. so that's what I did. Mm. So you 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 had your first child, yeah, um, a boy. Yeah, a boy. Mm. He's Mohammed. He is taller than me now. <laughs> How did that feel? Uh, now or before? When you when you had when you had him. Because you were still a teenager. Yes. I felt I was not ready to be a mother. I felt different. I felt the connection was different. Because I compare my second child, since my daughter is four years old, I compare both of them. And then I felt when I gave birth to my daughter, I have to call people to ask how to breastfeed, how to do this, because I don't know. And then I remembered when I gave back to my, to my son, I was still doing the same question. I was still asking the same question. I asked my mother how to do things because I was a child myself and then I have a child. So it was complicated. But then luckily, you know how it is here that uh, if you have a child, everyone get involved. My mother helped me. And then my son is even used to my mother than me because when he was two months old, I left him. I went back to high school. Mm. I went back to school, so he was always with my mother. Mm. So you never stopped going to school? No, I never stopped going to school. Mm. Until mm. today. <laughs> mm. I'm we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the impact of education mm. um, in your life, um, both past and present, and perhaps the future. Um, but so you had your first child, um, mm. and your husband was still away, was abroad, and you were in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened? Um, to the marriage? <clears throat> yeah, it was a sensitive topic, I could say, now. And uh, actually, I will not like to talk, to go deep inside, because it, at the end, it was not, it was complicated at the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Because I think they have realized that I am unstoppable, because I want to be educated. And then they have realized that by realizing that you know not everyone will accept who I am and what I want to be in the future. And by that, then I said, okay, I just focus on my education. Mm. Did you continue to marry, to get married mm. to the same it man? It did not work. That's it why I said it's work. a bit complicated. Mm. It did not work. Mm. And but, but it, when it ended, um, how did your family react? Mm, since we are from the same family, and then uh, the decision was from my side because I want to go to school. And then I had the opportunity to go abroad for studies. And then I don't want to miss second opportunity in my life. I have m messed up a little bit while when I was pregnant, going to school, all the stress and everything. Yeah, you missed out on a lot. Yeah, uh, also a lot. And when the school started, when I started high school, I started in second semester. Because first semester I was at home. I was not too strong. Then I don't want the same thing to happen. Then that's uh, when things change, when I have got scholarship to go for abroad. Yeah. Mm. And then you went to Poland. Yes. And um, while in Poland, you realized that the silence that you did in the Gambia, not talking about it because of the family, because of societal mm -hmm. you know, issues, because of taboo yes. attached to it, um, in Poland, you, you found out that um, people were speaking about issues like this. Mm -hmm. And then that also gave you the courage to, to, to speak out for the, for the first time about your past. Mm -hmm. What specifically did you come across or did you see or did you experience in Poland that gave you the courage to speak out finally? Uh, one thing will be that when I was in Poland, for example, and then I someone that who is always interested in doing a lot of activities and in Poland during my uh, studies then I come across the NGO Somalia Foundation and when I uh, heard about the foundation I thought it was only for people from Somalia but it was general the founder was from Somalia I went there we did some uh, projects together and then by doing that I started talking about me that was the first time then I said, I have a son. And then I started saying, but in the Gambia we have FGM, for example. 
but it's not a crime. And then I start learning that child marriage, forced marriage, uh, violence against women and girls, FGM, they are all violence against women and girls. Then I said, really? But why in my country I have never heard that these are violence? And then that I start, I was like, okay, let me go deep into this field to know, because I really want to speak up, because I have seen that through my childhood, I have, my, my, my right has been violated. Then I said, okay, that's how I started going deep mm -hmm. and then to know what are the rights of women and what are the things that violate women's rights. Mm -hmm. And then I come across all this topic and then I said, ah, mm -hmm. then I will start speaking up. Binda, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh,